Now our powerhouse roundtable is here, including Congressman Kinzinger, Democratic strategist Donna Brazil, Dan Senor, who served with the Bush administration in Iraq, now a co-founder of the Foreign Policy Initiative, Katrina Vanden Heuvel, editor and publisher of The Nation, and Fox News anchor Greta Van Susteren. Welcome to all of you. And Congressman Kinzinger, let me begin with you. You are Republican Congressman supporting the president uh, on this, but you have a big intra-party battle in both parties. The president doesn't have the votes now. Can he get them? Is he making the right case? Look, I think it's going to be very difficult for him to get votes, and I think this goes back not just to the issue itself, but you can't begin to build a relationship with Congress for the first time when you need their support on something like this. I mean, look, a week or a week and a half ago, my office actually reached out to the White House and said, hey, we support the strike on Syria. We're going to help you round up support if you need it. I haven't heard back from the White House yet. I don't know who my White House, I haven't heard back from anyone. I don't even know who my White House liaison is, which is supposed to be creating this relationship. So now we find ourselves in a situation where I think the president has made the decision correctly that the cost of using chemical weapons should far exceed the benefit that anybody gains from it. And he's trying to build a relationship with Congress, and there's a trust deficit. Meanwhile, Donna Brazile is also having trouble with members of his own party. Lots of Democrats in the House, especially saying we don't want to go along with the president. Can he turn it around? And the same question what must he do to turn it around well the president has to give a, a very forceful speech you know the Bible says if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound who shall prepare himself for battle well clearly if the president comes out and give the American people the evidence that he has seen if he is consistent in explaining why it is in America's best interest he may be able to move some of the Democrats. Look, they don't want to hand the president a defeat like his enemies or his opponents, but they really want to make sure that they can go back and explain to their constituents that this was a vote of conscience and this is a vote in, 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 in favor of America's security. Right now, many of the move on Democrats are opposed to it, and they're very passionate about their opposition. Donna mentions the uncertain trumpet, Greta Van Susteren, and that's yeah. been part of the problem for the president here. Well, I mean, why is, why is anyone surprised that the president's having trouble? This happened August 21st. He's been seen on the golf course. The House has not been called back into session. The Senate has not been called back in session. And all these leaders want us to take them very seriously, that this is very important. Where are they? It's not exactly leadership. I'm not surprised that the American people are distressed by this. The example that they're setting, that this is so serious, yet they themselves are showing no, they're, by their actions, are showing it's not particularly serious enough for them to come in and actually work and sell the story to the American people. But Dan Senor, you have seen a lot of Republicans who have supported military action in the past, just taking a pass here saying there's no way they're going to support the Yeah, president. there's basically two camps within the Republican world right now, Republican universe. One is sort of the Rand Paul camp, loosely defined. Isolationist, doesn't want to be engaged in the world, period. No matter what Obama says, they can't be moved. There's another camp, like you said, you, the one you cited, which has been supportive of engagement in the world, but they say they don't have trust, they don't trust Obama. They don't have confidence in him. They don't think he's competent. And the problem with that argument is it means that they're not going to be able to be for any kind of military force anywhere for the next three years. President Obama is our commander in chief for the next three years. If they're saying they don't have confidence in him to execute, what message does, does that say send to Tehran, where we want to be presenting a credible threat of military force in order to get them to stop the nuclear program? What do you think they're seeing when the Congress's dysfunctionality prevents the president? And from Katrina, acting? they are now unlikely allies with a lot of progressives. Uh, they are. I, um, but, you know, let me just step back for a moment. I think ultimately any uh, resolution of the human catastrophe in Syria, the sectarian civil war, is going to demand a political solution. And I think the president in this, these next days is waging an intensive campaign to launch military strikes when this country is being presented with a false choice. It's not bombs or nothing. Forceful diplomacy at this stage, in my mind, is more important than Don't force. Don't you need the threat of force behind that? I think you need to deal with the human catastrophe in Syria, not by bombing, but by alleviating the misery of two million refugees, by not launching, quote, surgical strikes, which may lead to more civilian casualties, and not emboldening a resistance, which may now feel America has come in on its side, and who knows who the rebels are, and it will make it harder to negotiate. But I will say the most important thing is after America's been at war continuously since 2011. Iraq poisoned the well. Americans are deeply skeptical of military intervention if there is no imminent threat. And the president conceded that well, he conceded in that the was press a big conference point. in Russia, exactly right. which is a very tricky thing now to persuade a nation 
when you see Gallup saying that public polling shows support for military action is lowest than at any time that they're Congress. How, how, how do you take them even seriously, though? If, if members of Congress won't come back, and they're going to tell us this is so important, but they wouldn't come back in the, since August 21st, that this is the most important decision they all tell us they have to make about war. And this is war. Yet they don't come off their five-week vacation. Well, let's, let's be clear about something on <laughs> All that. right, you the came president, over here. Yeah, the the president yeah. of the United States. Uh, said, hey, I'm going to have Congress come back on September 9th. I went back this week to have a hearing on this issue. You don't have to wait for him to call you yeah, back. Yeah, because he went to the G20 and summit. And it's Boehner, so, you know, by the way. Well, Congress, what happen, is the answer I... you make to those war-weary Americans? What is sure. the, the We're all war -weary. answer to, to Katrina Bank? We're all war-weary. We're tired of war. But this is a moment in time where I think in 10, 20, 30 years, uh, the history books are going to say this was a redefining moment in world history. And what was the United States doing? Did we find ourselves war weary? Did we find ourselves in a position where we said, you know what, Iraq wasn't, was terrible, Afghanistan was rough, we're just going to disengage from the world. We tried that in the 20s and 30s, and we saw what came as a result of that. This yeah. is a moment where we have to step up. And I think the president is ready to make that case to the American people. He's ready to put the lengths out there, so to speak, the lengths that's been missing in terms of why this is important for America's interest. If these chemical weapons get in the hands of the wrong people, Hezbollah or others, this could impact not just the U.S., but it could impact... Look, we, we, we talk about the opposition. We talk about this rebel movement that's fighting. They're going to see one of two things happen in the next few weeks. They're either going to see U.S. missiles taking out Syrian military facilities, or they're not. And they're going to see Assad's regime continue to use chemical weapons. It's, it's binary. What do you think Assad's going to do? They're going to see. Hold on, hold on. So the question is not whether or not we can have this highly parsed, highly nuanced, overly interpreted debate. The question is, it's a binary but, outcome. But, there's either going to be U.S. engagement or there's not. But, but, and that's but, the threshold this is what, question. This is what I want to step back again for a moment because I'm not an isolationist, and I think that there is an opening here for the president, who was right to call back Congress and seek authorization, and he should heed the decision of Congress, having made that decision. Has to, right? But it's an opening for a president. There is this conventional wisdom that his credibility will be tarnished if he loses this vote. But on the other hand, you could argue that it won't be because he came to become president right. by extricating this Katrina, country from two wars. You say there should be a political solution. A hundred thousand people That's are right. dead. Millions of refugees. Yes, yeah. Talk to me more, about the path to a political more, solution. How does more military might contribute to a better outcome? Because it degrades, it it degrades Assad's military but, but and weakens the, but, him. But, it's the best one at a time. Donna, then Greta. All right. Well, he's going to have to, to Dan's point, he's going to have to make that case. After we deter and, and degrade his ability, Assad will still be in power. The atrocities, the war will continue. The atrocities, the atrocities okay. will continue. I think the president has to tell a, not just a war-weary America, but an America that spent over a trillion dollars yes. for the last yeah. 12 yeah. years. And what have we gotten from it? But more hatred toward America. And, and Greta, all region. of this in the face of, and we just saw again yesterday, those, those pictures that are being presented to the Senate Intelligence Committee, the House Intelligence Committee right now. We have the evidence that people were gassed. There's no nope, question it, they were gassed. There are whole kinds of questions about whether it was command and control, whether Assad actually ordered it. And doesn't the United States have to draw a line yes. against the use of chemical I, weapons? I think the United States has to do something, but we have to be smart of it. We have a short-term strategy, no long-term strategy. If we take out all his military installations, as you said, he's still got the gas, he's still got his supplies, he's still in power. If we take him out, which is not the president's uh, goal at this point, regime change, we still have a problem because we have more than 26 groups, rebel groups. They're not the least, they're not, they're not one good group that we're, we want to work with. They're all these groups. I mean, we've got a mess. It's, you know, this is the problem is that we waited a long time. And the longer we wait, the bigger the problem we got. And we got sure. ourselves into a horrible mess. And the problem is, is that, you know, we haven't had leadership. I'm not just picking on the president on this. I'm picking on everybody, every member of Congress. Sorry, Congress. But, you know, <laughs> but, right. you know, but, like but you know what? Fine. This is, this is something that's been going on for some time. And it's like we have not had a seriousness of purpose about this. If 100,000 people are dead and we know Congress. it. See, uh, Congress is not the commander in chief. There's one. There's not 535. I think the point to make is everybody's under this impression that this is the very first time a red line has ever been put out on chemical weapons. We haven't faced chemical weapons since World War I on the battlefield for a reason. In Desert Storm, President George H.W. Bush sent a letter through Tariq Aziz to Saddam Hussein basically saying, if you use chemical weapons, we're going to use anything at our disposal, including nuclear weapons, basically. We created a northern and a southern no-fly zone over Iraq for 12 years because of our absolute disdain for the use of chemical weapons. If we don't enforce this red line today, how are we ever going to enforce it in the future when we let this thing What's slide? What's the answer yeah. to that, Katrina? 
This is a monstrous act, the use of chemical weapons. I still think we need more evidence. By the way, there are people, I've talked to people in Congress who still seek evidence. They want the UN evidence inspector. Of what? They want to Hold see. Hold on, what if you got the, what if you got the evidence? If you got the it's evidence, there. I would still argue <laughs> that you draw a red line by bringing together the international community, not just the U.S. unilateral punitive action, and you refer this to the International Criminal Court, call Saddam, uh, call Bashar Assad a war criminal. But you, the military yes, strikes, by the way, the military strikes, because the strategic centers in Syria are very much clustered around civilian areas, could well deepen, our humanitarian intervention could well deepen the humanitarian Here's catastrophe. The, 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 the administration will say, the administration will say. And by the way, we should be cautious in condemning because we have been complicit in use of chemical weapons as well. The key thing the is to ensure abiding by the Chemical Weapons Convention. Senator Manchin, interestingly, in the Senate, has a piece of legislation which calls 45 days for Bashar Assad to join the Chemical Weapons Convention. In the meantime, the president to <laughs> assemble an international coalition to yeah. destroy Assad's New is chemical weapons yeah. and to stop proliferation. Yeah, you get the last word. Yeah, the criminal court. Look, you say you want yeah, a political right. solution. I mean, the administration will say if you take Assad to the International Criminal Court, of which we're not do, a member. Do you think there is any way he's going to voluntarily leave power? There's no political solution where he says, "I'm going to leave power and then I'm going to be subject to the International Criminal Court." The one thing we have not tried, Christina, <laughs> Christina, Christina, the one thing we've not tried is to use military. Pressure but on Assad. Assad. I have to step in here. I have to step in here. We're out of time. We can the norms non-militarily. We just don't need to use military Quick question strikes. for everybody and say yes or no. Two yes or no questions. Number one, does this pass the Congress? Does the President act if it doesn't? It passes the Senate. I don't feel confident about the House. And I encourage the President to act regardless. I don't think he will. I think it may pass the Senate, uh, will not pass the House. And I think, as I said earlier, that the President was right in bringing the decision to Congress, and he should heed that decision, and his legacy will be stronger Greta. for it. I think that I agree with them that pass the, House, pass the Senate, not the House. The president said in 2007 to the Boston Globe that uh, it was that he should go to Congress when he was a candidate, and I agree that he was that he did the right thing. I don't think he can act. This is not imminent in light of what he, in light of what he has said so far. I don't think it passes the House. I'd encourage all of my colleagues on either side of the aisle put politics aside on this one. This is about Team America. This is about moving together as one and doing the right thing. I totally agree with the congressman, but I don't believe it passes the House. I'm a creature of that institution, <laughs> and they're not going to go with it. I think it. you all are all probably right, but I think there's some hope it still passes, but the president can't act if it doesn't. Thank you all very much.